What's up guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5 regarding pricing and also the controller. So recently Sony showed off the new controller for the PlayStation 5 is called the DualSense. So gone is the naming scheme for like the DualShock. Previously in the PS4 we had the DualShock 4. We all assume that for the PlayStation 5 we're going to have a DualShock 5, but nope, that's not the case. It's going to be called the DualSense. And Sony put out a blog post about this controller talking about all the different functionality and stuff it will have. They say, after thoughtful consideration, we decided to keep much of what gamers love about DualShock 4 intact, while also adding new functionality and refining the design. Based on our discussions with developers, we concluded that the sense of touch within gameplay, much like audio, hasn't been a big focus for many games. We had a great opportunity with PS5 to innovate by offering game creators the ability to explore how they can heighten that feeling of immersion through our new controller. This is why we adopted haptic feedback, which adds a variety of powerful sensations you'll feel when you play, such as the slow grittiness of driving a car through mud. We also incorporated adaptive triggers into the L2 and R2 buttons of DualSense, so you can truly feel the tension of your actions, like when drawing a bow to shoot an arrow. So, quick side note here, people have made comparisons to the Xbox One controller and also about like the Nintendo Switch, how those both have like triggers that kind of rumble and do different things with those. But these are apparently super different. So this is like how they say here, now you can actually like feel tension through your triggers, like when you're drawing a bow to shoot an arrow. So I don't know, it kind of sounds gimmicky, kind of like a buzzword, but I don't know, it could be more immersive. I'm not exactly sure. I personally like to disable all rumble off my controller plus it helps save on battery too so that's just me but maybe this new controller will change that but the article continues they say this provides us with an exciting challenge to design a new controller that builds off the current generation while taking into account the new features we're adding for example with adaptive triggers we had to consider how the components would fit into the hardware without giving it a bulky feeling our design team worked closely with our hardware engineers to place the triggers and the actuators the designers were then able to draw the lines of how the exterior of the controller would look and feel with the challenge of making the controller feel smaller than it really looks. In the end, we changed the angle, the hand triggers, and also made some subtle updates to the grip. We also took thoughtful consideration into ways to maintain a strong battery life for DualSense rechargeable battery, and to lessen the weight of the controller as much as possible as new features were added. For the buttons, you'll notice there's no longer a share button as we had with the DualShock 4. Don't worry, it's not going away. In fact, we built upon the success of our industry-first share button to bring you a new create button feature. With create, we've once again pioneered new ways for players to create epic gameplay content to share with the world or just to enjoy for themselves. We'll have more details on this feature as we get closer to launch. DualSense also adds in a built-in microphone array, which will enable players to easily chat with friends without a headset, ideal for jumping into a quick conversation. But of course, if you're planning to chat for a longer period, it's good to have that headset handy. Now, another side note here, I feel like this is gonna be kind of like another little gimmicky thing too. My guess is it's gonna kind of turn into the new Kinect mic. I mean, everybody always hated that, how people would have their Kinect mic plugged in and like you could hear people's gameplay in the background from their TV and you could hear like their mom screaming at them and like and their smoke alarm batteries are dying in the background. Like it was really annoying. And I feel like this is gonna be like the new thing of that. Now that every controller has a built-in microphone, hopefully it won't be on by default, but I still don't think it's gonna be great audio quality. I mean, it might be kind of handy if you don't have a headset, but like everybody has a headset these days, right? And I think it's also gonna be like a little thing similar to how on the DualShock 4, you have those actual like speakers on your controller that would play certain like game sounds and stuff. I just turned that off. I found that way annoying when I have my headset on and my controller's emitting sounds too. I just disabled that. So I'm sure it's probably gonna be the same thing here, but I mean, it could potentially be a nice to have thing. And they say, now let's talk about the colors. Traditionally, our base controllers have a single color. As you can see, we went with a different direction this time around and decided on a two-tone design. Additionally, we changed the position of the light bar that will give it extra pop. On DualShock 4, it sat on top of the controller. Now it sits at each side of the touchpad, giving it a slightly larger look and feel. In all, we went through several concepts and hundreds of mock-ups over the last few years before we settled on this final design. DualSense has been tested by a wide range of gamers with a variety of hand sizes in order for us to achieve the comfort level we wanted and with great ergonomics. Our goal of DualSense is to give gamers the feeling of being transported into the game world as soon as they open the box. We want gamers to feel like the controller is an extension of themselves when they're playing so much that they forget that it's even in their hands. We are thrilled about sharing the final look on the DualSense controller with our fans, and we can't wait for everyone to get their hands on it. I'd like to close with a message from Sony Interactive Entertainment President and CEO Jim Ryan to the community. DualSense marks a radical departure from our previous controller offerings and captures just how strongly we feel about making a generational leap with PS5. 
New controller along with the many innovative features in PS5 will be transformative for gamers continuing our mission at PlayStation to push the boundaries of play now and in the future. To the PlayStation community, I truly want to thank you for this exciting journey with us as we head towards PS5's launch in holiday 2020. We look forward to sharing more information about PS5, including the console design in the coming months. So just a couple quick thoughts about the PS5 controller so far. It really looks similar to an Xbox One controller. That's basically the internet's reaction to this is they're like, so they just ripped off Microsoft's controller. And it's kind of odd with the two-tone design. And it looks like all the buttons are like clear and the like actual printing on the button is underneath, similar to Xbox's controllers. But hopefully, I mean, it'll be a cool controller. I do remember Sony saying before that the DualShock 5 or this new DualSense controller is gonna be heavier than a previous DualShock 4, but it's still gonna be lighter than an Xbox One controller. But it still retains that same shape and like layout of a traditional DualShock controller with both thumbsticks down at the bottom. And I'll also have this new create button. So the share button, of course, then your start button. I do like, however, that the like PlayStation button is now not a circle. It's just like the actual logo. I think that's really cool and looks really sweet. And then one more thing is that it will have USB-C and it will have an internal rechargeable battery. So that is the PlayStation 5 controller. At the end, he said that they're gonna be sharing like the console design, a whole bunch of stuff in the upcoming months. And I think it's kind of unfortunate though, because Microsoft showed off the design of the Xbox Series X back in December of last year, and Sony still hasn't revealed theirs. But another interesting thing about this statement though, is that he says that the PlayStation 5's launch will be in holiday 2020. So once again, kind of confirms that we had some recent like leaks and rumors saying that it might be pushed back into 2021, into like early 2021, or even like summer next year. But nope, Sony's like, no, we're still gonna be releasing it holiday 2020 this year. They're just saying holiday 2020. They're not pinpointing a month or a specific date or anything like that. But as for the release though, we have information about how many units are actually gonna be produced and potentially the price point for the PlayStation 5. So this comes from an in-depth report from Bloomberg News. In an article they posted, they say that Sony is actually going to be reducing the number of PS5 consoles that they're gonna be making this year, but it's not gonna be due to the impact of COVID-19, but instead, because of the pricing of the console, because there's gonna be way more expensive parts, they're not able to create as many consoles as they'd like to. And they say the company has told assembly partners it would make five to six million units of the PlayStation 5 in the fiscal year ending in March, 2021, according to other people involved in the machine's supply chain. And when Sony released the PlayStation 4 in November, 2013, it sold 7.5 million units in its first two quarters. So they're basically just going for a little bit over a quarter because we're all assuming the PlayStation 5 is gonna probably release in like November of this year. So if you have November, December, January, February, and March, there's just five months there is when they're gonna have five to six million units of PlayStation 5. And you compare that to PS4, it sold 7.5 million in two quarters. So in almost the same time frame, it sold 7.5 million. So basically they're gonna be producing between two and a half and one and a half million less PS5s than they actually sold PS4s in that same time frame. So all in all, I think this means that it's potentially gonna be a lot harder to find a PlayStation 5 once they actually go up for sale. I'm sure we're gonna have pre-orders going up for the PlayStation 5 in the next couple months, probably right around when E3 would have been, so in June. And then of course it's gonna be released, my guess, sometime in November. And then you're also gonna have people buying it for Black Friday and also for Christmas. So I think a likely scenario for the PlayStation 5 is gonna be that it's gonna be kinda of hard to find PlayStation 5s. A lot of stores are gonna be sold out with no real answer as to when they're gonna be getting more shipments of them. I mean, even Nintendo Switch has been having this issue recently. The past couple weeks, a bunch of Nintendo Switch consoles have been sold out just about everywhere. But Nintendo was like, hey, we're gonna be making more of them, don't worry. So Nintendo upped their supply chain in order to create more Nintendo Switches to keep up with demand. So it is possible that if all these five to six million PlayStation 5s all sell out, Sony will make more and try and like pump out more. But like I said, this is just apparently until March, 2021. And then that's when they're gonna be doing Know, even more units so if by march 2021 all five to six million units have all been sold out then you can basically expect sony to like up their production and to produce even more playstation 5s to keep up with demand but as for price for the playstation 5 bloomberg says that the ps5's loftier price tag may also deter initial take-up game developers who've been creating titles for the next playstation anticipate its price to be in the region of 499 to 599 so with the actual pricing here that they stated 
take that with a grain of salt because as they say here, game developers who've been making titles for the next PlayStation anticipate its price to be in the region. They're anticipating it. And it's coming from game developers. This isn't like an inside source within Sony or from assembly partners or anything like that or their own like investigation stuff. This is just like them asking game developers, what do you guys think the PlayStation 5's price is gonna be? And they're like, oh, I don't know, maybe 500 bucks to 550. But then again, they do have hands-on with the dev kits and the actual hardware, so they kind of know what kind of level of power is behind the PlayStation 5. So they are able to make some kind of educated guesses as to kind of the power and the pricing that we can come to expect. Do not take this as factual that it will be $500 or 550. Sony is still trying to finalize the price because of all these components and stuff. They said here that all the components are gonna be pretty expensive for the PlayStation 5, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the actual console is gonna cost that much either. Console manufacturers just about always take a hit on the price and they'll end up losing money on every system sold and they'll make up for that within game services and accessories. So it is still possible the PlayStation 5 could be $399, but then there is still another likely scenario where it might be 550. Now, as for the competition, the Xbox Series X, I personally believe the Xbox Series X is gonna be a $500 console. I do not think it is possible for Microsoft to drop that price down any lower. All that power and the hardware we're getting in that system, I think it has to be a $500 system. And it might also be likely the PlayStation 5 will also be a $500 system. But Microsoft has said that they're waiting for Sony to reveal their price of their system, and they're gonna try and make it competitive. So it might be possible that both systems will cost you $500 this year, but we'll just have to wait and see. But there has been rumors and leaks saying that Sony will be revealing new information in the month of May, where they're potentially gonna release the design of the console, and then perhaps in June, they're also gonna release the release date and the pricing for the system as well, plus maybe gameplay for games and a whole bunch of other stuff too. So there has been some pretty big delays and impacts of COVID-19 that have affected Sony and the PlayStation 5, but it will still be coming out this year, but all these factors have likely played into Sony's strategy for the PlayStation 5. And Bloomberg said that Sony had to announce the PS5's DualSense controller early because they feared that it would leak if they didn't announce it when they did. So since they're apparently fearful that the controller was going to leak early, it's still possible that the price and also the design of the system hasn't been nailed down either yet. Or else they might be fearful of those leaking too. That's the information we have today about the PlayStation 5. What do you guys think about this? What do you guys think about that new DualSense controller? Do you guys think you're going to like it? I think USB-C is going to be the biggest change for this controller, and I'm going to absolutely love that specifically. And it'll be interesting to see what new changes will actually have an effect on games. And then also with the pricing too, is there going to be a PlayStation 5 that's going to be $550? And also, are you even going to be able to get your hands on a PlayStation 5? All this information will come in due time. We just have to wait. But make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're not already with notifications on. That way you guys stay up to date on any of the latest and greatest PlayStation 5 videos. If there's any brand new information, I'll make sure to update you guys right away. And as we get closer to when E3 2020 would have been, we're going to be getting more information on the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and tons of awesome games coming out this year. So that's going to do it for our video tonight, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.